Hi guys, so just wanted to jump on and talk about the success path with Practice Nav. What is the success path? So the success path is kind of reflecting on what stages you're at in business because as we talk about in business, if you want to go somewhere, you first of all need to find out where you are because there's no point in aiming to go somewhere and you've no idea where you are at the moment. It's like getting into a car and driving aimlessly. So we need to look at where you're at in the business and then potentially progressing from one stage to the next stage. I've identified six stages. These stages are based on experience, uh, based on uh, the people I've worked with over the last couple of years. So it just gives an idea of where people are at. And regardless of turnover, you could be at stage five or six with a low turnover and you could have a massive turnover at stage one, two, and you're just in a chaotic state, you need to get some structure in place. So I'm gonna quickly run through each stage just to give you an overview. Uh, but I think if you can identify where you're at in this success path and then potentially looking to aim to progress to the next one, that may be a good a way to assess where you're at in business and then look towards building some goals and having some focus around that strategy. So if we look here, stage one, Obviously, when you're starting off in business, you're gonna you're gonna be working a lot in the business to try to get it up and off the ground. You're not really sure uh, what you're gonna do in, in the business, and, and and it's hard at the start because you're not really sure if it's gonna work. Um, so, but you're aware that you can't sustain these the input that you're doing, and you need to make some changes. So, a milestone for that would be to have a business plan in place with smart goals, obviously, uh, and the core values identified. We talk a lot about core values uh, and everyone in our business knows our core values. So the, having core values makes it easier to make decisions. So if you're wondering about something, you refer back to your core values, you know what they are straight away. Ideally, you're looking for a full support team in place. So you have your accountant, you have your finance, you have your insurance, your business advisor, practice now, and you have a weekly, yearly and monthly budget begin to change mindset. And what that means is, instead of working all the hours of the week, you start to box a little bit clever. Um, so you might hire an admin staff to do the tasks that you don't need to be doing. Uh, action steps, so you can download our business living budget planner, you identify your goals, have your ideal client focused on and get a coach on board. Practice that. So next we look at systems review in stage two. So you have your business in place, it's running away, and then you're just looking to make it more efficient. Uh, a lot of time doing admin tasks manually, that can be the case. You might be doing paper notes, you might be doing payroll, just taking you three hours a week or whatever the case may be. You have no idea how the business is doing. So I would ask people, oh, what's the profit in the business? How's it going? They're not really sure, but like you should be able to have a fair idea in a couple of minutes of how your business is doing. Some people are taking wages, they're not really sure they're not taking a regular amount. Yeah, it's, it's a bit chaotic. So we do a full systems review, look at the key systems in place for the business, have a policies and procedures manual in place and begin to take ownership of the situation rather than blaming other people. You're starting to measure the time in your diary. So your time is quite precious, time in the diary, that reflects your priorities. Uh, identify activities that you do repetitively so you can outsource them. Uh, and then you're looking at staff recruitment. So if we're looking at that, then you're going to integration. Obviously, if identified, you need to hire more staff. You're definitely looking at admin. If you're, if you're hiring two staff, admin should be one of them if you haven't any staff at all. Starting to work less in the business and more on the business. All the software integrates with each other. The staff training is in place. You're delegating lower level work to staff and lower level does not mean it's not important. It just means your skills can be used elsewhere. And you're starting to see opportunities. So you might be looking at room rental. You might bring in another healthcare practitioner into your business. You're looking at other ways to generate revenue. Weekly meetings with staff then, these are the action steps. Monthly contact with support teams. That's your support team that we talked about up here. And then you're identifying what your aim is for the business. Well, you should have had that done way back here, but if you haven't, you're just reaffirming that. You're starting to ensure your exit strategy is in place. So talked a lot about this on our latest course, but you're looking at how's your pension? Are you gonna sell it? What are you gonna do with it at the end? 
then we're looking at in automation. So you're need making the whole thing run potentially without you. This is where you need to invest in software, whether it be accounting software, clinical software, or the software could be another admin person on board and you're outsourcing, you're beginning to outsource and you're just working on the key fundamentals that you need to look at. You may be looking at developing a practice manager. That could be someone that already works there or somebody that you hire in. Any tasks that can be automated, that is the milestone R. Uh, you can take two weeks holidays, no problem. This is a, a measure of the success, I suppose. You can clearly identify tax liabilities and profits within five minutes. You don't waste time on trivial tasks. Uh, you list what you want to outsource. You start batching and scheduling your work. That goes back to um, the time in the diary. Identify what your time is in the diary and you have a 12 month job list in the calendar in place. So you know what your marketing plan is for 12 months. You know what the revenue required for 12 months. You're able to identify seasonality within the business. All that sort of stuff is really, really important. So continue to seek improvements with all tasks through automation. So if you're at the first stage, th th these four stages, and you've got to stage four, you're doing really well. So you could be at stage four and the business could be turning over 80,000 a year. You could be at stage one and the business could be turning over eight, like half a million a year. So it doesn't really matter about what the, um, so as I said, it doesn't really matter what stage you're at in the business or what revenue you have in the business. It's what stage you're at is important. So that's like, that's really important to reaffirm. I know I keep saying it, but regardless of the revenue, you need to know what stage you're at. So if you get to stage four and you think, oh, I'm doing really, really well here, great. Uh, you're potentially working less clinically, but you have the option to work as much as you want. So let's say a staff member leaves, you can jump in easily, no problem. You're not afraid to raise the prices. That's a big thing in private healthcare. People are really afraid to raise their prices because they think to be seen as money grabbing, that sort of stuff. But if you need to raise your prices, you need to raise your prices because people are paying for the value. You potentially have more than one revenue staff. So that might be that you're renting a room or you're doing a course online or you're starting to train other people in doing something. Um, as I said, the full training manual is in place. So that goes back to the policies and procedures manual. You're delegating more tasks. You have full financial understanding of the business. Sometimes people will say, oh, I'll let my accountants sort that out. The accountant you start with back here should not be the accountant you finish with up here. So as you progress, you potentially may progress from being a sole trader to a limited company. You have a look around for different accountants if you're struggling with that. Uh, you see other healthcare business owners as colleagues rather than competition. That is a big change in mindset. And ideally you'd have that mindset back here because the more you see them as com or competition, it's it creates negativity so what you're better off seeing them as colleagues and going how can i help you out so that it improves the profession overall so as i said the action steps ensure the trend manual is in place and accessible ensure you have at least four meetings a year with the accountant identify what you want to do with your business so that goes back to the exit strategy here now you have it really nailed on as to what you're doing pursue other interests outside of work with extra time and flexibility. So exit strategies, when people retire, the evidence suggests it can be seen as a time of bereavement even for people. So if you have more time in your hands, you want to be able to use it effectively, whether that's playing golf, going for walks, doing the Camino, whatever it is, you need to start looking outside the business. So maintenance if you get to stage six it's fantastic but you don't stay at stage six stage six is maintaining it you're constantly improving it it's like if you go here and you're looking to run 5k and you've been on the couch for the last five years when you get up here you want to maintain your fitness you don't want to just stop because you get here because you're going to come back down here pretty quickly so you know you are now in a position to sell, reduce hours, or do a profit share. You've got options with exit strategy. So your staff taking ownership, you've employed staff, they're helping you to run the business. Policies and procedures manual fully implemented and reviewed often. Clinic manager in place, option to work or not. Looking at other revenue streams, adaptable and open to change within the industry. Because one thing is for sure, the industry is gonna keep changing. 
action steps, continue, continue, continue. <laughs> That's what it's about. So you need to continue training, upskilling, reviewing your systems monthly, continue with the meetings, continue recruitment. So that is a big overview, guys, of the stages of success in the business and the pathways to achieve that. If you want to have a chat about it or you're not sure where you're at, we can help you identify it. We can do, arrange a call. So if you want to email Colin at practicenav.e and we can arrange that. Any questions, let me know. Cheers.